Hey, how are y'all? It's the third day of January, the third day of the new year. Happy New Year. Um, y'all, it's my birthday. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what type of intro I was going to do, but that's just going to have to just be it. Um, I have been enjoying my day. I've actually, I have actually been working just remotely. Um, I just finally stopped doing some work and, um, I just decided that I did end the year with a video saying like a highlight of my 2017, but I think you guys kind of know that me actually being somewhat consistent with the YouTube channel was a highlight of my 2017. So here we are in 2018. I turned 34 today. Um, I've been to the spa, I've been to lunch, I've, you know, I've had moments where I could just reflect on this past year and my growth. Um, I actually signed some paperwork today on some things that I'm extremely excited about and looking forward to, uh, bringing more things to fruition this year. Um, but I'm extremely grateful for how this year has actually started. And if you follow me on social media, which many of you do follow me on Twitter, or you follow me on uh, Facebook or Instagram at break of DMG, um, then it's like, literally, you've seen me kind of going nonstop since the year started. I didn't really get a break. So today is really like my break day, but I still have to check in um, with the newspaper, the Atlanta Voice, as well as checking in with fans, favorite fan. We've got some major things happening during this basketball season. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, and then it's like my other things that I have my hands in, just trying to make sure that everything is in order as this new year begins. So... I just decided that I wanted to just kind of, you know, give you guys this highlight of a day. Um, it's my birthday. Again, um, to remind you, it's my birthday. Go shawty. It's my birthday. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm going to kind of like tell you where I am. Uh, this is a tiny home around Atlanta. Uh, I love this space. I've actually been here before. Um, and I'm pretty excited about uh, being here and having the opportunity to share the experience, which I've been doing on the Atlanta Voices IG stories, is sharing the experience. Um, not a lot of Black people are talking about tiny homes and tiny houses, and um, I, I, I know that it's kind of like a trend now because, you know, people can see the shows about them. Um, but like I've done the research and I'm like this close to building one. Um, and I, I mean, I literally have a mapped out tiny home design. I've got actually three of them that I'm actually going to talk to a builder over in Gwinnett County. Um, about some ideas that I have for a tiny home and a tiny house and why I want to do that. Um, I know for me, it is it, it goes along with my lifestyle currently. I am, I've been a minimalist for like the past two years. This is my third year. Basically just um, getting rid of certain things that I don't need, uh, not overspending on certain things, not even buying certain things that I think I need and just being mindful of, how I'm living and what that means. I mean, being vegan is a lifestyle in itself and people tend to forget that it's not just about your diet. So when you're vegan and you're making all of these choices and you're adjusting your lifestyle, um, eventually you get to a point where you're like, do I really need all this stuff? Like, and so for me, I've just been, you know, educating myself on what that means and what that looks like. And um, I've been basically early on that trend, but really didn't make some hardcore decisions until like about two years ago. So going into my third year, I still have like a handful of other decisions that I have to make that I'm literally like, oh my God, am I going to get rid of this? Oh my God, can I live without this? Um, but I'm going 
to make that decision, those types of decisions this year so that I can just basically simplify my life. Um, I enjoy that because it gives me the freedom to kind of move. And, and many of you that follow me, you know, I'm always on the go. So, but for me, it's helpful because I used to live in this huge house and now I'm like, not nah, you know and then now it's like literally for me do i need this huge house to to live and you know whatever that means for me as far as my success in my careers and things that i'm doing out like no so as far as i'm concerned um I see where it creates financial freedom. And for someone like me who was a housewife that then started working on her own and created her own business, and that business didn't start really making money until like the past two years and just recently. And so like in, in my eyes, it's like, I kind of really do need to create some type of financial, you know, independence for myself so that I can have the freedom to do what it is that I want to do and other things, not just um, buying material things that aren't going to like add value to really to my life. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. Um and I think you guys follow me because of that, you know, and you guys pay attention to what I'm doing because of that, because I'm very, very transparent, very, very authentic. And I, I come from a real genuine place. And it just means a lot to me that I get an opportunity on my birthday to kind of share something that I, I enjoyed all of last year. Like last year, I think I kicked off my whole like staying in tiny homes, like consistently at least once every two or three months last year because the year before I found like a couple when I was traveling but then like last year I was in Tampa for the national championship game from around my birthday and there was this uber dope tiny home there and I was just like okay I'm gonna make the decision that I'm going to stay in different ones via Airbnb and I'm going to document these experiences and what I like about them. And then I'm going to like literally be able to talk to a builder and say, this is what I enjoyed about the tiny home that I stayed in um, in Tampa. This is what I enjoyed about the tiny home that I stayed in um, right outside of Asheville. Or this is the experience I received when I stayed in a tiny home in Pittsburgh. So today I'm in a tiny home that is in Atlanta. It's insane how close it is to downtown um, because you wouldn't even think that <laughs> this home, would, this tiny house would be here. But it gives me a great idea for if I were to buy an actual home um, and then wanted to build my tiny home on my land. Um, and then, of course, you've got to deal with city ordinances and zoning and all of that. And I've been around the tiny home um, and tiny house conversation that's been happening here in Atlanta because they're getting ready to build a village in East Atlanta. And then if I'm not mistaken, there's going to be another village somewhere in DeKalb County. Keeping my eyes on that, showing up for town hall meetings about that and everything. And I'm just excited that today I get to have this experience again. And it's really fueling this, this desire to have this. Like, this is something that I can... I can let it stand and do what it needed to do and pass it over to my children and they can make money from it. And, you know, it's just something that it just gives me uh, like some type of hope, you know, for my future and having something of my own. So, um, yeah, I think it's time that I pick up this laptop and give y'all a quick little tour. Um, again, I shared like an in-depth experience on the Atlanta Voice. I'm going to see if I can make that video um available on my channel as well but i also have like some major news so before i close this out or before i um give you the tour or whatever um i will be working the national championship game and for many of you that know my journey in working with fans favorite fan and in sports it's been a rough one um so this just solidifies my place in the sports industry the the value that I bring to this industry, um, the importance of seeing brown girls on the sideline and um, us being able to, 
you know, actually write about the stories that some media outlets miss and paying attention to those narratives. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm uber excited about that. I got a chance to cover my first Peach Bowl thanks to the Atlanta Voice newspaper and the importance of that um, Peach Bowl. It was the 50th anniversary. And then the um, outgoing chairman, um, it was amazing to interview him and to hear about how the Peach Bowl has literally um, done some great work here in the city of Atlanta. So now we've got the national championship uh, game coming here. We've got Georgia playing Alabama, which is uber dope to me. Um, and I think that I'm going, to, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to come off of this high right now. I'm very grateful um, for the opportunities that I've been given. And I think that you all know, like, I've I've never been that type of person where I wanted to brag about um, me doing this or me doing that and all of these things. I just share my experiences. And, and sharing my experiences, it's afforded me the opportunity to do other things. And companies enjoy that. And, um, you know, brands enjoy that. Um, I'm not always trying to sell people something. I'm literally telling you, like, you can live your best life if you decided to make that decision. And then this is what you can make it look like for you. Like you figure out what works for you. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, me being a minimalist and being at this point of my life where I'm still making decisions to cut certain things and people out. Um, it's important for me to kind of just be like, you know what? This is going to be great. I can be fine with this. I can celebrate me. I can be okay with, um, you know, patting myself on the back for a job well done, but I still have work to do, you know? And so um, I think that that happens when we don't celebrate ourselves. We always expect other people to do that. So therefore we are seeking some type of validation and I no longer need that. Like I'm celebrating me all of 2018. And uh, I think the first three days of this year proved as to why I have every right to do that. So with that being said, let's celebrate this tiny house because I, like, if there was, like, a basic template for a tiny house, this would be it. Like, it's literally, you walk in, bed's there, you've got a sitting area, a desk area, basically a table area if you want to sit there and eat as well. Um, there's, a, a, like, a little storage area, but it's, like, it's very open. Of course, it's not closed, but it's very open, and you'll be able to see these things. I'm just giving you a quick summary. And then the kitchen area is uber dope. Like, there's literally everything that you need within that vertical area for the most part. And so, as far as I'm concerned, it's, you know, when it comes down to the different tiny homes I stayed in, I've stayed in one that actually has a big enough uh, shower area that there was a bathtub in there, you know, or there was an insert for a bathtub. So it's um, it's kind of up to you what you would want to to have. And I think because I'm already living like this, that I'm basically preparing myself for this process. So um, I'm speaking that completely into existence, and I can't wait for the day that if and when this happens, um, that I'm able to show you guys, like, via video, the whole process of building and creating or even buying. Like, there are some tiny homes that are for sale. Like, what, all you need to do is have land to put the thing on and go get it. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's an option, too. So, the, the, my, my, my plan could possibly be to buy first. Uh, put it on some land here somewhere in Georgia where I can get it approved and then um, eventually designing my own space, you know, and that works for me. You know, I, I have no problems with that. Um, I've actually been looking into homes and things like that around Atlanta that I would want to buy um, just for uh, like just for rental property sake or what have you. But um, I'm just I'm keeping my options pretty open. I've never really had to. Uh, sit down and talk about these things or, or deal with these things for myself and to think about my children in the future and what they would need. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I just, I don't, I like if I was to leave tomorrow, I want to make sure my kids um, have a plan or have something in place for them that I can hand to them that's mine. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, everything in here is just, it's very, very, simple very to me it gives me a modern look um 
and it's very spacious to me with it being a tiny home, a tiny house. And um, I love it. I love it. Like, there's just nothing about this space that I would complain about. Um, and then I find it real funny that in some of these tiny homes, they have nice TVs. And I'm like, if I'm living in a tiny home, I'm not going to have a TV. I don't even have a TV now. So, <laughs> so um, but, I mean, it's, it's good to see where they would place it or, um, uh, you know, the size of a TV and what would work. Um, so I'm excited about that. So, yeah, let me um, step over here by the door and give you guys a quick little tour, and we'll go from there. So here we go. Do, do, do. So um, this is the patio area. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to put on more light so you guys can see. And then remember that storage area I was telling you about? Here it is. There's a safe, just in case. Um, and then I love this sitting area over here. So dope. So dope. Very nice. I'm kind of scared to sit on that fluffy thing. I don't think I'm supposed to. Then, of course, the bed. But from here, I wanted to kind of show you, like, how close the bathroom is to the bed it's it's enough space that if there were two or three people in here people could move around and I think that that's the that's the thing about tiny homes that people like don't really pay attention to because you've never physically been in one you just automatically assume that people can't move around and be in in, the, in a space this small and I, I, I I've had my kids in tiny homes <laughs> It works. It's fine. Um, so here is that table area, the desk area I was telling you about. And then like there's this view right in front of the bed, which is uber amazing. There's that TV, the um, kitchen area. I hope that you guys can really see this. There is a fridge in here. And I love the fact that these people actually recycle, which is uber dope. So, um, and then... Uh, here we are in the bathroom showing you. I actually can see this in the thing. But again, utilizing space. Um, you can see here, like if I needed to put some things that I personally wanted to put up, I could put it up there, up top, and then go from there. But yeah, like it's so spacious and great. Like I just don't understand why more and more people are not interested in living this type of lifestyle. Um, and then, of course, the shower walk-in. Dope. Toilet, gonna need that. Uh, the sink is very modern, love it. I love the view from this window to this window, which is uber awesome. Um, because I tend to think my best in the morning when I have to use the restroom. So let's just be mindful of that. <laughs> um, and so just to kind of like show you the view from the bathroom, like there's the bed and everything in it. And it's not that bad. It's just like, I just think that people are scared of things that they are not familiar with or don't know. And so for me, it's like, I've done this over and over again. And I've enjoyed it every single time because all tiny houses are not created equal. <laughs> so every designer has a different idea of how to utilize space. And I think that that's the beauty of being able to stay in numerous tiny homes and tiny houses through Airbnb and not really breaking the bank to have like either a one night or a two night stay in these spaces to really get a feel of what I would personally want in my own space. So, um, yeah, I hope that you guys actually enjoyed that. I've been enjoying this space and I'm looking forward to being here and um, getting, you know, wrapped into the night and sleeping through the night and all of that. I know that I'm going to actually go have dinner. And so after dinner, I'm supposed to be sharing some other things on the Atlanta Voice about the, the transition from day to night in this space. So um, because for some people, security issues are a big problem with time tiny houses and tiny homes but y'all they make alarm systems for those two like y'all quit tripping and if you are happen to be a member of the nra or something like that carry a piece <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, I think that this is a great video. I hope that you guys watch it all the way through. If you enjoy it, please share it. And when you do share it, make sure you tag Airbnb and tag myself. Um, and if you have any questions, send your questions to me um, at Break of Dawn on Facebook, as well as you can reach out to the Atlanta Voice because we're going to start sharing some great pieces on real estate and some other things. And this kind of falls within the lines of those things and um, challenging um, African Americans to think outside the box or maybe in the box, but utilizing the space. How about that? So thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I hope that uh, we're going to have a great year this year, 2018. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to see me do a video of um, for this year, please shoot me an email at breakofdawnmontgomery at gmail.com. And happy birthday to me!